The good news is the SharePoint can be died or can be alive. It really depends because we have another tool called ChemLocator, which can operate within the SharePoint environment as well. So in that form, it is, let's say, dead, but we have other options who is really want to use SharePoint. But in this talk, uh, it's not a complete uh, talk. It's just an introduction to your next, to your next speaker. So I try to be quick. Uh, and uh, since, uh, yeah, the first question is the cam locator. What is it uh, at all? So probably a few of you already heard it, but many of you are not familiar with that. And the answer, uh, the concept is very, very easy. Uh, it's simple. It just extracts uh, chemistry from documents. Uh, what kind of documents we we are dealing with, and uh, the answer is we have a we support a vi wide variety of documents. I don't have really the time and the space here to list all of them. However, I will have a slide later with a few examples. But we can even take it to a more abstract level. And what we really do in ChemLocator, we just convert unstructured data to structured information or structured knowledge, as you wish. <laughs> but why we do this? And the answer is not that it's scientific. We do it because we don't have time. That's the only reason. Uh, we don't have time to read documents the whole day on a regular basis. Uh, that's why we need something which does this dirty job for us. So we need something which can extract the relevant and valuable data from documents. And uh, there is a little bit more scientific uh, answer for that as well that we'd like to provide you uh, starting point because once you had the unstructured data, a lot, a lot of documents, for instance, in a cloud or somewhere, and you have a tool that extracts the data and makes it structured, it makes uh, really a knowledge base for you that could be a very good starting point for further analysis according to your needs. However, we also have ideas how to, how to do and how to con continue with this topic. And how we do that? Um, First of all, we uh, read the content of those files we support, and uh, including the text, including the uh, images as well. Those files could be in the cloud. They could be stored in your local systems. There are the couple of examples, even if it is not that readable. Uh, so we have the content of the documents. And then we have a series of, uh, of components provided by Chemoxon or external components uh, what we run on the content. And uh, we also have the beating heart, as Wolf introduced in this uh, tool as well. And using these components, we extract this kind of treasure what Akos mentioned in the portfolio talk this, uh, uh, this morning. And we store it in a structured way in a relational database. But this is not the end of the road. We have many, many ideas. I just would like to share a few. For instance, uh, we would like to uh, extract essay data for unstructured documents as well. It's a very wide topic, so I wouldn't go into details. Uh, if you are interested, we are looking for partners in this topic, so just please find us. Uh, another thing is that we know that in unstructured documents, it's full of hidden relationships. And those relationships are not easy to find. That's why it is very good if you can somehow at least visualize the relationships. Uh, this uh, picture here, the whole, whole picture is not just an illustration, but this is an exact screenshot of, of our, not from our tool, but we have built the graph, uh, the graph database behind, which created this uh, graph here, what you can see. But it's only a tiny bit of the whole database because it contains more than two million documents and a lot of relationships. That's just a little part of that. And uh, we have plenty of ideas how to continue with, uh, but at the moment it's on uh, it's on uh, in a pilot stage. Let's say a prototype what we have. Plus we have the chemical entity recognition already built in the chem locator, but we don't have the same for the biology. So thanks to the uh, or a designed relationship with Cybite, we, we can benefit from their large amount of uh, ontologies, biological ontologies, what we can use it in ChemLocator. And we can do the same 
entity recognition for, for biological entities as well. Well, let's say it's not true. We cannot do at the moment, but we are working on that. <clears throat> Plus, uh, we also thought about somehow pre-process big amount of document sets which are freely available somewhere on the internet or, so, for, or from somebody from publishers and pre-process them, make them available for our users, or maybe even include in the Chem Locator tool, and, uh, and then the users could benefit and can work on the, on the information. And also, it's again, it's the left side, it's not an illustration. Those guys who were uh, part of the scientific workshop yesterday, they have seen that in action already. So that is something which is already working. However, it still could be enhanced, and we have still ideas how to continue with. And most importantly, we need you, of course, because otherwise we cannot improve at all. So we need your uh, partnership, your feedback, and, uh, and also this is why we are very grateful that you are here. And I am personally very, very uh, thankful for our next speaker, Brian, because he flew from Denmark here to share his story with you and with us. So I think this is, an, this is the end of my presentation. So, Welcome, Brian, and, and the stage is yours. Thank you.